The U.S. Open and California have long been a match made in golf heaven. The 31st state has been an integral part of the fabric of this championship for so many years at so many venues up and down the coast. In the summer of 2021, the Golden State once again played host to the most deserving in the men's game. Brooks Kepka. A competition set to the soundtrack of the waves crashing below the cliffs that Torrey Pines South sits atop. Another one is landed at the 72nd hole this time for Ron. But in the end, only one man would ride a wave to victory. Cementing himself as a force in the game with a finish as perfect as a San Diego sunset. This is the story of the 2021 U.S. Open Championship. Rom shines at Torrey Pines. See, this is where the people that know don't get burned somehow. I'm gonna say for the people that didn't catch on to it, yeah. the Arizona State full on kit. Hello. It was his Father's Day gift, so his first Father's Day ever. We figured he might as well start grilling so he can teach the little. Was it before or after the U.S. Open? After. Oh, you got here. We had ordered here. it before. You got here after, okay. I wasn't, yeah, wasn't sure. We yeah. had ordered it before, but during quarantine, I guess a lot of people wanted to learn how to grill. <laughs> so it was a bit back ordered. It was very different to each one of my wins because I feel like, at least in my case, when you achieve a certain level of success without winning a major, you know, the media is going to put it on you. Uh, and then as, as a player yourself, you want to win as well, right? And I think when I got it done and, and everything was over, I had such a sense of relief that I think it was actually the quickest I've ever processed anything, just because, right, it finally happened, we're here, and, you know, I, could, I just felt a big load off my shoulders. I'm not usually that type of person, but, you know, the happiness and euphoria we felt, and I feel like everybody. Uh, you can see everybody around us was in the same, in the same, you know, mind frame, rightfully so, right? After winning the major, it was, um, it was very different to other ones, that's for sure. Heading into the summer of 2021, John Rahm was a man on fire. He had eight top tens and held a commanding six shot lead heading into the final round of his last start before being forced to withdraw due to a positive COVID test. Disappointing, sure, but it was a situation that gave Rahm plenty of hope and motivation heading into the U.S. Open. After what happened at Memorial, when everything and Kelly was just obviously affected by everything that happened. And I looked at her and I said, listen, I believe in karma. We're good people. Something good is going to happen. And I told her, good things happen to good people. I don't know what or when, but something good is coming our way. I have this for a final par save. And Bryson DeChambeau is indeed a US Open champion. Nine months after a September U.S. Open saw Bryson DeChambeau take home his first major championship at Wingfoot, Rom led a balanced field as the U.S. Open was back in its rightful spot at the start of summer. But prior to a shot being hit or players' arrivals, there was an expectation, a feeling that something great was on the horizon at Torrey Pines. How could there not be when the only other time the U.S. Open graced these grounds was perhaps the best ending in championship history? Expect anything different? Tiger Woods with a torn ACL and a broken leg going 91 holes to win the career Grand Slam for the third time. I could hear his leg cracking and I was watching him just try to walk. And I, I couldn't imagine what he was going through. I just didn't see how he was going to get through it. He was controlling the way certain events 
turned out just through sheer will and he just had this mind control over the game that we've never seen and that kicked in. That drama lasted for three full days, and I mean every single minute of it was dramatic, and it was just great stuff. As this year's event got underway, the potential for fireworks was undoubtedly there, and the memories of 2008 were fresh on the minds of the players as they began their quest to join Tiger as a U.S. Open champion at Torrey. The toughest test in golf and one of the game's most prestigious championships challenges a field of 156 players to a stern examination to identify its champion. Welcome to the 2021 U.S. Open local qualifying at the Preserve Golf Club. And as a true Open, anyone with a low enough handicap index is welcome to try and qualify. You know, these sort of tournaments get my competitive juices flowing. And and even though, you know, I'm older than dirt, I mean, the competitive spirit doesn't go away. The process is simple, but arduous. Qualifying consists of two stages, local and final. Local qualifying is played over 18 holes at more than 100 courses across the U.S. Roughly 525 spots are available to move on to the final qualifying round known as golf's longest day. Back on golf's longest day, the road to the U.S. Open, a couple weeks away from Torrey Pines. Final qualifying is played over 36 holes across several sites in the United States, as well as one in Japan. 36 holes starting from basically dawn until dusk is going to take a toll. In 2021, of the 8,000 players who attempted to qualify, only 68 would join the field of 156 competing at Torrey Pines. I felt like I was close and I was grinding in the middle of this round, like I tasted it. It's, this was a long day and the last six or seven holes, I just, my body wasn't doing what my mind thought it should do. And for those lucky enough to make it through. Pretty cool. Good finish. I mean, it's amazing. I'm so excited to go to the US Open. It'll be my first major. They're rewarded with the most difficult test they'll ever face. Whoa, look at this thing. Where should I put it? Uh, right here. Beautiful. That's a lot of space. 37 year old journeyman Andy Pope knows the deal. Uh. He Perfect. isn't Somebody a household go. name, but he's become a revered right, figure in you. golf circles. Whoa, uh -oh. look at this guy. What's up? Sorry, buddy. What's up? How are you? Good, Good to see you. Good job, man. Cheers. 506? Yeah. That's a straw. Are they going to give you like just a yearly exemption in this? I mean. You shouldn't have to. <laughs> Daddy? Yeah. Daddy? Miss Shinnecock. Is this you guy played. better than you? I mean, he's playing much better than me. Pope may be right about Lonto Griffin, but there's no doubt that qualifying for five out of the last six U.S. Opens is an accomplishment in its own right. It's such an awesome experience. It's just something you always dream about, you know, playing in the U.S. Opens. You know, now that it's my fifth time, you know, it's kind of become more of a reality each time. The middle of the green looks great on every single hole. Like I said, I thought the greens were a lot smaller than I thought yeah. they were going to be. Definitely, I think, going to be the hardest one I've played. Last time he played in an open in California, he made the cut at Pebble Beach. I want to do more than make the cut. I want to, I want to be in contention and you know, see what it's like to feel the uh, pressure under the gun. In the first group off Thursday morning, he would be a championship pace setter, if nothing else. Qualifying for the US Open is a monumental accomplishment. But getting your name engraved on the trophy come Sunday is an entirely different story. Just nine months prior to the U.S. Open at Torrey Pines, Bryson DeChambeau walked away from Wingfoot Golf Club with that trophy. It's not in, oh, so check it out, there's no dents, no nothing. I didn't do anything bad to it, so. 
He was looking to become just the eighth man in history to win it back the following year. I want to get one last kiss, though. <laughs> Uh, try and be as aggressive as possible. Uh, I feel like it's a little bit similar to, to wing foot, albeit the grass around you know, in the rough is a little thicker. I'm going to be trying to bomb it as much as possible and, and you know, gouge it out when I don't end it in the fairway. While the long setup seemed perfect for his power game, DeChambeau's history at Torrey Pines is not promising. He missed the cut in his last two PGA Tour events played here. Looking to unseat the champion was his chief rival and two-time U.S. Open winner, Brooks Kepka. Always a force in majors, Kepka seems to embrace the challenges of this championship, finishing as winner, winner, and runner-up in his last three attempts. I enjoy it. I enjoy when it's hard and when it matters the most. That's, that's something I thrive off of, and I think that's why I do so well. San Diego native Xander Schauffele has had this date circled on his calendar for years. The sixth ranked player in the world entered Torrey with a singular focus, winning his first major championship in his hometown. Seven years ago when they announced the site here on TV, my dad and I were sitting on the couch and um, we're like, hey, we need to do whatever we can to get into this tournament. And so here we are, you know, sitting here trying to win the thing. So maybe I didn't set lofty enough goals seven years ago, but um, they're, they're definitely lofty enough now. After missing the cut at Wingfoot in 2020, the first half of 2021 saw a resurgence from former world number one, Jordan Spieth. With eight top 10 finishes, including a victory at the Bolero Texas Open, Spieth hoped to regain the form that propelled him to the winner's circle in the 2015 US Open at Chambers Bay. I'm in a position where I think I can stand on the, the 10th tee on Thursday and win this golf tournament. And as much as you want to say that you know, you can fake it till you make it. I mean, you, I needed that confidence between then and now to, to really think that standing on the tee. Justin Thomas arrived at Torrey Pines, searching for the form that led him to victory at the Players' Championship in March. The world number two entered the week battling a wayward driver, ranking 154th in driving accuracy. I clearly haven't been playing well and consistent, but I definitely have been playing better than the results have shown, but a lot of it is just mental, and that's something I'm definitely have worked on and will need to execute at a week like here at the U.S. Open. The favorite going into this U.S. Open, however, was Spain's John Rahm. Despite a tough few weeks heading into the championship, the new dad was looking to capture his first major title on his first Father's Day. I've been playing really good golf all year. It's finally clicking all together like I was waiting for it to happen. Not that I'm expecting to play perfect, but I know I can play at a really high level, so I'm confident, yeah. The first round got off to a late start as heavy fog delayed morning tea times by 90 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to round one of the 121st U.S. Open Championship. When the balls began to fly, 32-year-old Russell Henley bolted up the leaderboard early, getting into red numbers with a birdie at the seventh. Russell Henley for birdie. Then grabbed the solo lead with another birdie at 10. Russell Henley, this for birdie and sole possession. It's a break there and perfectly done. Henley would close with two more birdies to cart an opening four under par 67 to top the field. Yeah, solid birdie to finish up after reaching into it the par five 67. To the surprise of no one, chasing him was 2017 and 2018 champ Brooks Kepka. He makes birdies on four of his first 11 holes. Big breaker from his right hand side. Has it got enough speed? It sure does. Finishing with a two under 69 to put himself in contention in yet another yeah. major championship. It's just incredible just to watch his focus. Xander Shopley treated hometown crowds to a laser show to begin his U.S. Open campaign, a ball striking exhibition that led to easy birdies at 16 and 18. Yeah, that's a good one there. There's some slope behind this hole. This could get really good. This may end up right down next to the hole by the time it's done. He got the putter rolling on the fifth, 
for a key par save to remain in contention on a course he grew up playing. Beautiful. Playing alongside Shoffley was another San Diego native, six-time U.S. Open runner-up Phil Mickelson. Mickelson was granted a special exemption into the field earlier in the year. But the 51-year-old ended up not needing the help, thanks to an odds-defying win at the PGA Championship in May. But after an opening 75 at Torrey, Lefty had work to do if he hoped to complete the career Grand Slam. The afternoon wave at Torrey Pines featured some of the biggest names in golf, all of them capable of going low at any time. But many of the world's best found the test at Torrey too difficult. Bryson DeChambeau continued to wow the crowds with his prodigious length, but struggled with three straight bogeys on the back. He would finish with a pair of birdies to stay within shouting distance, and in true Bryson fashion, he was the last one on the range trying to find his game. Rom for birdie. Would you make him the favorite this week? Yes, absolutely. Pre-championship favorite John Rom finished with a birdie to cart a two under par 69. It was an unusual start, but I had some people in the morning start the first five, six holes poorly and then go on a stretch where they actually made birdies, which is what I did. And then on the back nine, I started playing some good golf and took advantage of the, of the shorter ones. But the Spaniard knows there's a long way to go if he wants to shed the label, best player without a major. And Louis Oosthuizen with a, a rare shot short of the hole here. This for birdie. Great golf of late. Three straight birdies got Louis Ustase into four under and a share of the lead. The only thing that could stop him was darkness, as first round play had to be halted. The smooth swinging South African would have to finish his first round on Friday morning as he contended in yet another major. From Rancho Santa Fe, California, Phil Mickelson. Perhaps the most intrinsic component of the U.S. Open is it's just that, open. Open to anyone from anywhere. Open to a player like Richard Bland, a 48-year-old journeyman from England who qualified after becoming the oldest first-time winner in European Tour history in his 478th career start. And here's the Englishman Richard Bland for birdie. Teed off of 10. So the good U.S. Open continues. However, at Torrey, in just his fourth appearance at a major, Bland played like a man who had been in this position before, handling the tough layout with relative ease. With a trio of birdies already on his card, Bland had this at 17, his eighth hole of the day, to grab a share of the lead. That's two birdies in a row for the Englishman. It was more of the same after the turn for Bland, stuffing one close at the second for another birdie. The ball's been taking one big hop and then grabbing and spinning back here to this left hole location. That is a beauty there from Bland. Then another laser-like approach at the fourth left him with only five feet for the solo lead. Okay, hop it on. Well, how good is that? What a shot. In his own little zone. The Cinderella story would finish with a second round 67. He was five under for the championship and remarkably became the oldest man to hold the 36 hole lead in U.S. Open history. Chasing Bland were some of the biggest names in golf, including Bryson DeChambeau. The defending champ didn't have his best stuff in round one and looked to be heading the wrong direction again with two earlier bogeys in round two. Let's see over the green. Oh boy, oh boy, he's got that for five. He had this approach to the par five 18th, looking to swing momentum. Release. Oh, 
So trying his darndest to get uh, that to even par or better. At one point, Bryson was four over par. This would get him yes. to even. And an eagle at the 18th for Bryson DeChambeau. Yeah, after that slow start, look what he's done now. The eagle got DeChambeau to even par for the championship, keeping the dream of back-to-back -back U.S. Open titles alive. That's, I think, staying patient is, is one of the most difficult things. I went to bed and, you know, I found a little something that, that worked for my driver. Meanwhile, John Rahm proved the old adage that par is a good score at a U.S. Open. Friday might be the least I've ever looked at a leaderboard in my life. If you shoot under par, amazing. If not, try to shoot par or the closest to par. And I feel like I just kept on going on how I finished the day before. Battling an unruly driver, he leaned heavily on his short game. Braces that went in and an early fist bump on a Friday from the stand. Now Rom at 14. On a short side, very tough shot here. He's got that shot. At the 18th, Rom had this left to get into red numbers for the day. How big might that putt be come Sunday night? Louis Eustazen struggled to find the form that propelled him to the first round lead and was two over for the day through 13 holes. But this long birdie at 14 stopped the bleeding. He's got a chance here. Oh, yeah. oh, likely, huh? It's Louis. Neustazen had this putt at the last to finish the day at even par and remain in the mix. Louis trying to get it to four. He was there to start. And back again, 71, even par after the 67. So he shares second place with Russell Henley. Xander Shopley gave the hometown crowd something to cheer about early with back-to-back -back birdies. I think he got it all, though. That'll bring the hometown folks to their feet. A new hard lock style. So a bogey birdie start for Shopley. To back birdies for Xander Shoffley. But Shoffley's normally trusty putter went cold. He finished even oh. par for the day and two under for the championship. He's got that new arm yeah, line grip. Knew right away, didn't he? Oh, that was the same miss as well. Both pulled to the left. At the top of the leaderboard, surprise first round leader Russell Henley looked to keep the positive vibes rolling. Yeah, good shot. Very good shot. Oh, my goodness. What a shot. And if you're going to win the US Open, you're going to have to pull a rabbit out of your hat like Henley did here at the sixth. Oh, wow. <laughs> if that's not the definition of a US Open par, <laughs> I don't know what is. But it wasn't all roses for the Georgia Bulldog. He'd bogey the par five ninth to close out his day. Oh, goodness. Despite the disappointing finish, Henley still managed a one under round of 70, meaning he would share the 36 hole lead in a major for the first time in his career. I've never played this well in the US Open, so I don't really rem have a good memory of what, what the last few have been like besides maybe Shinnecock. So far, it's been really fair. It's just been really difficult. If you're not inspired by looking at this leaderboard, I don't think you're looking close enough. We have a 48-year-old who could supplant Hale Irwin as the oldest U.S. Open champion, and we are only halfway to the house. Two rounds have been played in the 121st U.S. Open at Torrey Pines. The field has been whittled down to just 71 players. And while some of the big names are lurking, a pair of underdogs pace the field. 
Russell Henley had played stellar golf over the first two days, scoring under par in each of the first two rounds to hold a share of the 36-hole lead. He was joined at the top by the longest of long shots, Richard Bland. The 48-year-old Englishman rode a wave of birdies on Friday to become the oldest leader at the halfway point in U.S. Open history. But there was a lot of golf remaining, and a host of the game's biggest stars were giving chase on moving day. After making the cut on the number, England's Paul Casey was making some noise early. This putt on five for his second birdie of the day. Yeah, nice one. Casey would shoot a front side 31 and made the turn at even par for the championship. The Englishman then electrified the crowd with a long putt on 13. Oh, this might be in a good spot here. Oh, what a catch. Nice putt. Casey would finish with a birdie at the last, putting him in excellent position to win his first major on Sunday. And Casey made a nice move today. As Casey ended his day, the groups at the top were just getting started. On the par 4 12th, Rory McIlroy was looking to make a move. Third shot for McIlroy. Missed the fairway right, missed the green short right. Plenty of room to work with. Oh, how about this touch? No! Yes! Can't make it from six feet on the last hole, Paul, but can pitch it in from 20 yards. That's two nice hole outs from off the green. If he can get the putter going, look at his name right there, tied for six. Look at this. Only three back. The chip in birdie was his third of the day bringing him within three shots of the lead. After a wayward tee shot on 15 led to bogey, McElroy birdied the 18th to move to three under, carding a 67, tying Casey for the best round of the day. Despite a flurry of birdies early on Saturday, this was still the US Open. It was only a matter of time until Torrey Pines fought back. Xander Shoffley struggled early with a flat stick, missing a makeable par putt at the first. First round leader Louis Oosthuizen also had trouble at the start. But while many spun their wheels, Bryson DeChambeau was finding traction. After a birdie at one, the defending champ took advantage of a monstrous drive on number six by hitting a wedge to eight feet and draining the birdie. DeChambeau with a golden opportunity here at six, not much break. Takes advantage, huge drive, short second shot. That moved DeChambeau to two under for the championship. After a bogey on six by Richard Bland, once again gave him the solo lead, Russell Henley had this for birdie on nine to stretch his margin to two. Gonna break right? Oh, yes it will. So Russell Henley with uh, several Good putts. Ahead on 13, Bryson continued his charge to get into a tie for third. Yeah. Oh, wow, man. All right, he's been threatening. Henley is in danger of losing his lead altogether after finding the bunker at the par 311. How about that, baby? There's your US Open highlight of the day so far. Meanwhile, playing partner Richard Bland had trouble getting out of the bunker. Oh, I don't see him getting it close. No, he it's, tried to go for the backstop and he bladed it. Oh, it's all good, Raj. That shame. would lead to a second of six bogeys on the day. Up at 13, Mackenzie Hughes leapfrogged the group of players at three under with this long putt for Eagle. Iguala of 13. Mackenzie Hughes. Roars into solo second. The Canadian moved to two under on the day and four under for the championship. Up here, 100 yards back left hole. Got on the 14th, John Rahm nearly hold out, but missed his comebacker for par, and then missed again for bogey. Oh my goodness. Double drops him to one under, He's got five back for leader Henley. Rahm for double. I was not being this precise of the TS I would have liked. I was missing it left a lot, and I stabilized around after the first few holes, and I got it going. I was one under par uh, up until 14. <laughs> but that's one of those moments in the US Open that if you can overcome, end up being in a pretty good spot mentally. Up at 18, 
DeChambeau needed two putts to carve the only bogey-free round of the day. The 68 moved him to three under, just two shots off the lead after a bogey by Henley at 15. Jambo, the only player without a bogey today. A guy that just gets out there and busts it down there. That was the big conversation coming in here, Zing. Is he going to be able to get away with the same things he did at Wingfoot last year? And this stick will do you up? The answer so far is it's working out. Also finishing up his round is Mackenzie Hughes, who needed this birdie to be the leader in the clubhouse at five under. He handled it no problem. With back-to-back -back rounds in the 60s, Hughes is now 18 holes away from becoming the first Canadian to win the U.S. Open. Rahm, who wasn't able to get much of anything going all day, had this for birdie to end his third round on a positive note. A tap in birdie for a one over 72 to two under for the championship, but only three shots back. The feel that I know I, I played better than the score reflected, right? The feel of my swing, of my thoughts, of the process was better than what the score showed. It's what kept me going, knowing that, you know, my best is yet to come. I have 18 holes and my best golf is going to show up, and I could just feel it. As Saturday drew to a close, Louis Oosthuizen ended his round with fireworks at the last, with this chance for Eagle. He's won a major and has now finished five times a runner-up, including at that PGA Championship, this from 52 feet. Be a great way to end it. Louis Oosthuizen! That putt moved Oosti into a three-way tie for the lead at five under. In the final pairing, Henley had to get up and down for par to join Oosthuizen and Hughes at minus five. He's landed just short of it, but he's carrying a little more speed than he wanted. But all in all, not a bad shot. It's going to be for par. What a save. Nice little fist pump. Yeah, that is just so clutch. Fine up and down. Meanwhile, his playing partner, Richard Bland, finished off the tough day with a par of his own to shoot a six over 77 dropping him into a tie for 21st. As moving day closed, the three co-leaders had little reason to rest easy that night. Within four shots of them sat six of the top 11 players in the world. With all that in play, there was little doubt a terrific finish at Torrey was on tap. Sunday at the U.S. Open. Wouldn't want to be there. This hole will be a key hole coming in. You've just got to hit the fairway, even out of these lies. It's going to be tough to control your ball and with today's hole location. If you uh, don't, you're not going to be able to control your ball, let alone half the time get a club on it. Did you cut it in 2008? Yeah. Did you really? That's pretty cool. Storylines abound at Torrey Pines. Thank you, my friend. Everybody, all the crew. Good to be with you. Thank Three you. men were tied at the top at five under. Louis Eustazen, a five-time runner-up in majors, headlined the trio as the only major champion. Meanwhile, Russell Henley and Mackenzie Hughes were both looking for their first majors. Two shots back were Bryson DeChambeau and Rory McIlroy. DeChambeau striving to become just the fourth man to defend his U.S. Open title since World War II. While McElroy looked to get back into the major championship winner's circle for the first time in seven years. And then there was John Rahm. He had hung tough all week and was well within striking distance as the day began. Please welcome from San Diego, California, Xander Shoffley. Beginning the final round four shots off the pace, 
Xander Shopley started fast out of the gates, with this birdie at the first to get to two under. Rom followed suit with a birdie of his own on the opening hole. As soon as I stood on that tee on Sunday, and as soon as I struck that first tee shot, the way it flew, the way everything felt, the way it, I visualized it, I walked off that tee saying, this is my day. And then this approach at the second. Right there. Needs to spin. He did it. Does. What a start for John Rom. No Rom would make his birdie and trim the lead to just two before the leaders even teed off. The crowd, the way they were cheering for me, the support I had on a US Open was the closest I've ever felt to what I've had in Spain. Henley bounced back from bogey at one with birdie at three. This is turning just a little left of it, but aggressive, I think. Oh, that's a good shot. And after a bogey by Oosthuizen at the fourth, Henley is back on top at five under. After a bogey by Henley at six, there was a four-way tie for the lead as DeChambeau teed off on the par 3-8. Trying to hit a high right to left shot here. Done that very nicely. If he gets the right skip on it, it could be good. Kind of like that. That's one of the DeChambeau with a near ace. The birdie would give him the outright lead at five under. After he nearly went OB with his tee shot at nine, John Rahm punched out and nearly holed this approach for Eagle. Uh, getting better now. I'm not sure that was an intent. Is it going to find the cup? I hit a good shot exactly where I want to take this slope and I have three feet for birdie, right? So I turned a bogey into a birdie. I'm like, whoa, I know Bryson's coming in behind me. He made birdie on eight. I'm a couple behind. I need to pick up the pace a bit. So that was a big change. The kick in birdie would get the Spaniard back into the group at four under. Back in the final pairing, Mackenzie Hughes righted the ship with a birdie at nine to get back to four under. There got that one. Meanwhile, playing partner Louis Oosthuizen had this for birdie to tie to Shambo for the lead. Made a lot of good looking putts, but nothing's really dropped. There that goes. one does. Oosthuizen to five under and a co-leader. With the last group to the front nine, there were two tied at the top with a slew of big names within striking distance at the 121st U.S. Open Championship. On the 10th, Oosthuizen had a chance to take the solo lead. Well, that's a good look. Well, there you go. It's now a great look. <laughs> the birdie moves him to six under. Meanwhile, up at 11, DeChambeau needed this for par to stay one back. And just like that, Oosthuizen led by two. 54-hole leader Mackenzie Hughes on the tee at the par 3-11. Incredibly, Hughes's ball bounced off the cart path and came to rest in the tree. It's so far left. The terribly unlucky bounce led to a double bogey five and effectively ended the Canadian's bid at his first major title. On the par 5 13th, Bryson played his fourth from the bunker over the green. That's catastrophe. This would be a double bogey seven, his fourth drop shot in as many holes. Still on the fringe of contention, McElroy went for the green and two at 13. Yelling at it to go. Left center of the green. Oh, I made it. It's an excellent attempt. 2011 champion had that left for eagle. Has to go in. His putt just missed. But the birdie moved him to within three of the leader, Oosthuizen. As for the betting favorite, Rom from the fairway bunker at 17. Bunker was the second best spot to be besides the fairway. It ended up being a great yardage. I think it was 120 meters downwind. It's just hard gap wedge, knowing I could spin it, and adrenaline took over because I hit that about four yards longer than I thought I was going to. The solid effort would set him up for this birdie look. It is a type of putt I like. I grew up in a golf course with very severe slopes, right? So I'm not used to having straight putts. I'd rather have a big break like that than a dead straight putt. And 
the Spaniard is now tied for the lead. That reaction, I think it was more of a reaffirmation that is going to happen. Not, not that it was an early celebration, but um, all that belief that I had pent up in me kind of came out and, and I had to let it go because there's no way I could hit the next tee shot if I kept all that in. Rob, fresh off his birdie, stood on the tee at the last and let it rip. Cut back with the win, needs to keep bleeding. It does on the left side of the fairway. It's enormous as well. Back at the 14th, Ustazen grinds out a par to remain tied atop the leaderboard. But he is putting together one of his best seasons ever on the green. Up at 18, Rom went for the green and two. When I hit that shot, I thought that ball was gonna land next to the hole and I was gonna have 20, 30 feet behind the pin for eagle. Even before I got there, I knew I was gonna have to hit it sideways, give myself 20 feet, and hope I make it. Because at that point, I'm tied for the lead. Lewis in 14, it has to face 15, 16, and 17 before we get into 18, so I'm still hopeful. I don't blame him. I mean, that ball on line with the flag could have chased all the way down into the pond. A solid bunker play left him this putt for the lead. I've seen that putt a million times. When I read it, I saw it right away. I just followed the routine, but I saw the break, and I was like, I just need to execute. And I kind of blacked out a bit. Just my body took over. But as soon as I hit that putt, instant impact. In my mind, I'm like, that's dead center. Number one is landed at the 72nd hole, this time for Rom. To take the lead in the U.S. Open. Winning or not, I was proud just of doing what I did on 17 and 18. I was happy, and I think that was why the reaction happened. It was the first time I'd seen my parents in a year and a half. They had just met my son a couple days before. And well, it took a little bit until <laughs> I realized, well, Louis still playing. God, this could actually extend into a playoff. After he heard the roars up ahead for Rom, all eyes were now on Ustazen. At 17, he found trouble off the tee. Slide, slide. Uh oh, so to move a little oh, right. Oh, it's up the left. Be careful. That's in the oh. penalty area. Rom could do nothing but watch. The worst feeling in the world. The worst, by far. Um, I hate it. This is not a fun feeling. You know, every second is an eternity. After a great approach, the South African face jet another must make par putt. Oh. Barring a miracle at the 72nd hole, John Rahm would become a major champion for the first time. After he found the rough off the tee, Ustazen was forced to lay up to the par five finishing hole and needed this hole out to force a playoff. That's past the hole, so he didn't get it to spare. How could it come with us? With that, John Rahm wins his first major championship and becomes the first Spaniard to win the U.S. Open. Little man, you have no idea what this means right now. You will soon enough. It's a big load off your shoulder. The first thing I felt was a massive weight on my shoulder, off my shoulders. You know, it's a dream come true. I've dreamed of winning a major for such a long time, getting it done. Yeah, it's just mission accomplished. More than the satisfaction of winning was the satisfaction of, of getting that out of the way because it, it can be stressful and it was time to get a bit in my mind. The winner of the 121st US Open, John Rahm of Spain. Uh, if anything, it's going to the next majors knowing that you can get it done. I mean, you have the validation. That's a key, right? You know you have it done. So next time I'm in that situation, I know I'm capable. I don't have to prove myself because I've already done it, so I'll have that belief in, in, in within myself.